The SM7B is a legendary microphone, one of the most iconic microphones ever made. Podcasters, gamers, YouTube content creators, voiceovers, professional singers, you'll see this microphone being used in every single application. But what if I told you that most people don't even know if they're using a fake microphone or if it's real? In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know so that way you'll be able to spot a cheap copy from the real authentic SM7B and this is a must see video. Let's go. All right, you see, I've got my SM7B plugged in and you're listening to the sound of the Shure SM7B right now. Now, whether or not this is the real SM7B or if it's this fake SM7B, that's completely up to you because I'm gonna show you all of the differences and the features right now. But you can see that this sounds really good, right? The other, the fake, is very, very similar in sound, but there are some differences. It does sound a little bit more muddy, but here is a key factor to knowing when you plug this microphone in, as you see, I have mine plugged in right now, and you turn the gain all the way up on your preamp, what's going to happen is that the real Shure SM7B, I have this currently turned all the way up, and the real SM7B does not emit any buzzing sound. But if you have the fake SM7B, you turn that gain all the way up, and I'm gonna tell you, the buzzing sound will be so annoying that you'll probably just wanna pull all of the hair out of your head just like I did with mine. Now that is the key difference when it is that you're actually connecting the microphone, but in certain situations when you're making a purchase, for example, you're not going to be able to plug it in all the time to listen to it, right? You're just gonna look at it and you're gonna say, wow, that looks like a Shure SM7B. Yeah, it's. $60 or $100, that's a deal. A Shure SM7B will retail for $400, but a fake microphone can go for any price because to make that microphone costs less than $60 and some other unknown wherever it may be. Some of the key points that I'm going to show you are what's going to allow you to be able to right off the bat instantly understand it, and then some other points, you're going to have to open the microphone up to see the internal components on what's inside of this thing, so that way you can compare the differences and you will know what those differences are because I'm going to show you. Now, one of the key points that I wanna point out to you that you need to pay attention to is the actual cable. Now, this cable, the one key feature that you must pay attention to in regard to this cable, actually there are two key features that you must pay attention to, is how long the cable actually is. Shure only makes this cable at a length of, I wanna believe it's six inches. Now, this is what happens when you have the length of this cable so precise and whoever's manufacturing this thing does not really pay attention to all of the details in regard to how long this cable actually is. So if you have the yoke or the mounting bracket in this position, all the way next to the microphone, as far as it can go, you will not be able to take the cable and put it over the hand screw. You see, there's no possible way I can do that without destroying this microphone. On the fake SM7B, you'll be able to put the yoke in this position and then easily take the cable and put it over the hand screw. That's one thing to look for. The second thing that you have to really pay attention to is these little grommets right down here at the bottom. Now, I'm gonna show you this close up, these little grommets right here. You have to pay attention to that because on the fake SM7B, you can just shake the mic and those things will fall off. But on the real SM7B, you, it will be next to near really super difficult to take those things off and pull them out, okay? Sure has them mounted in there really well. And both of them, grommet here, grommet here, and you'll be able to see that they're built with, it's built with quality. You're not gonna be able to get these things out, but on the fake SM7B, <laughs> those things will fall out before you even have a chance to even try to pull them out. Another thing you wanna pay attention to is where the cable is going into. If I unplug this right now, you're not gonna hear any audio, okay? So I'm gonna do it, watch. Okay, I'm plugged back in again. Do you see this? That was extremely easy, right? But on the fake SM7B, it's very difficult to remove this XLR cable from this XLR port. The reason for that is because they didn't quite perfect the system of being able to have something here where you can easily take it out and then easily put it back in again. They didn't develop that. So, you know, in order to get this out on the fake Shure SM7B, what you need, quite simply, is a hacksaw. You'll need to chop it off because it's not gonna come off very easily. I promise you. <laughs> These mounting nuts here, the hand screws, 
hand screws here, they are all made of plastic on the fake Shure SM7B. Now sometimes it's difficult to understand what's plastic and what's metal. What else can I show you? The very top, you see this little part right here I'm rubbing on? That little part that I'm rubbing on right now, think of that as the top of my head, my bald head. It's kind of round, right? Is it round? Same thing with this. It's kind of round, but on the fake SM7B, that is going to be completely flat. R and R, round, real, fake, flat. Round, real, fake, flat. Don't forget that. Let's talk about the back side of this now, the plate. On the fake SM7B, you'll see that the paint here where it says sure is going to be really dirty and grungy, and it's gonna look like somebody spray painted it with a Krylon can and then touched it up with, some, with a Q-tip. This is going to be very, very precision, precise painting on this, on the words here. That's what you're gonna have to look for. Now, once you remove the back plate, you're going to see that on the real SM7B, that the holes where the screws were are countersinked. So that way you'll be able to put the screw in so the screws will lay flat once you screw them down. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that just to tell you exactly what happened here. <laughs> before I actually made this video, I bought a Shure SM7B before this. I wanted to improve my audio in the studio. And I'm really happy with the results that I'm getting from this microphone right now because I know this is the authentic microphone. But confession, I bought a fake SM7B, hence the reason why I'm making this video right now. Because I don't want you to be fooled and you should not be fooled. And it's a shame that you have all of these fake microphones running around and people like us, even techies, don't even take the time to really check out and make sure that the microphone is authentic. And this is the problem that I had. I returned the microphone, thank God I was able to do that. Uh, a little birdie told me, you better check and make sure that that thing's real. Unfortunately for me, it was not real. So this one is the authentic SM7B, as you can clearly see what I'm showing you right now, the few things I'm showing you, but there's a lot more. Now, one of the most important things to pay attention are the hand tightening screws. Now you'll notice on the inside that you're gonna have some brass sleeves. They're gonna be two brass sleeves and one white plastic sleeve. But the most important thing is what is actually all the way on the inside, the brass sleeve. Now on the fake SM7B, you will not see this. You will only see the screw, but on the real, you will see the brass sleeve and there's no mistake mistaking this, that's all you have to look for. That's going to tell you whether you have a real or a fake. Now, another thing too, the decal on the SM7B is only halfway around, whereas on the fake SM7B, usually you'll see it going all the way around. Now they've gotten smart, but the point is that the real SM7B will only have it halfway around. That's it. If I open up the back of this plate and take it off, you're going to see that the back here is going to be sort of a brass color. The fake SM7B is going to be like a silver tone type of thing. I don't even know what alloy it's made of, what metal it's made of, but I do know that this is going to be a brass plate in the back. And when you remove the brass plate, you're going to see four wires inside. And those wires, the colors should be green, black, yellow, and white. Now, if you see colors on those wires that are red, black, blue, and brown, or whatever, sure, the company, sure, does not have wire code or color codes for that type of wiring, and they did not put those colors into this authentic microphone. So all you'll have to do is just to remove those screws, and you will see that the plate will come off, and then you'll be exposing the wires internally. Don't damage anything, just be careful and just look inside to see what color wires you have. Remember, they should be green, yellow, black, and white. Okay, let's move on to the next one here. Uh, let's see, ah, the capsule. This capsule that you're looking at is recessed. If I had to guess, maybe about inch and a quarter. And what you're looking for is to make sure that the capsule is recessed to that specific height. The reason that they recessed it is because they wanted you to be able to be close up on a microphone and still have this proximity effect with this resonance chamber back here to give it the sound that it's legendary for. Now I'm gonna put this back on, but the one key thing to remember is that this has to be at least about an inch and a half in height, and it shouldn't be any more than that. If you see it any closer and it's really close to the top here, take it out, either get a refund or throw it in the trash. Now, another thing to consider is the cage surrounding the capsule. You're going to see that on the real Shure SM7B that if you try to pop that cap off at the very top of the cage, that you won't be able to do it because it's welded on. Right now is extremely difficult 
for me to move this thing, it's not gonna move easily. That is a sure trademark that on the SM7B, you're not able to move it very easily because you have these things tightened down. Now on the fake SM7B, I can tell you, you can tighten those things as much as you want. In fact, you can go get a monkey wrench and sit on it while it's tightened and tighten these things on as much as you possibly can on that fake sure SM7B. And I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> That thing will be flapping harder than a flamingo flying in the air. This is a very precision microphone. One of the reasons why is because of the fact that on the fake microphone, they did not use the detail and the quality of the actual screws and how they thread it on so that way the mic will maintain its position, it will maintain its form. They, what they did was put these cheapy little components in here and therefore there's nothing that you're going to be able to do to tighten that thing down to make it stiff. Now another thing to pay attention to is that the cord will always be located on the outside of the mounting bracket. If you see that it's located on the inside of the mounting bracket, then you've got a fake Shure SM7B. Or it could be possible that someone took the microphone off of the mounting brackets and purposely placed the wire on the inside of the mounting brackets. It's going to be it's going to be slightly lower, and this is this one here is going to be slightly raised. They're not going to be lined up properly. I promise you, because they just they haven't perfected the art of of printing properly. So that way they can exactly duplicate the process. In fact, on the owner's manual that they included on the fake Shure SM7B, some of the words were spelled incorrectly. So that's an indication. Why would anybody, a manufacturer, spell words incorrectly if they if they weren't from another country or something like that? You know what I mean? So this is what you have to look for. Read the manual. Find, get a red pen. Circle all of the incorrect words. Okay. <laughs> microphone should be spelled M-I-C-R-O-P-H-O-N-E, not M-I-K-P-H-O. That's my name, Mike Sykes. So that's what you have to look for. All of these details I'm telling you about right now. I hope this is really helping you out, you know, because you really need to know this stuff. You know, this is, I'm really proud of this microphone. And actually, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video is because I wanted to actually test the sound on this microphone because this is the microphone that I'm going to be using from now on. If you heard on my intro, there's a huge difference in the way my intro sounded. And that's coming from a shotgun microphone, but the shotgun microphone that I have is, um, phantom power. You have to have 48 volt power. It's more sensitive than this microphone. This is a dynamic microphone. It's not going to pick up too much of the background sound here. And in my studio, it's a larger studio with a high ceiling. So I'm hearing a lot of the ambient resonant sound from coming from my studio. And I don't like that. You know, I want something that's very direct and I want something that sounds very crisp and deep and allows me to be able to work my audio and also for you to be able to appreciate that audio. Because I'm telling you, when you got some headphones on and you're hearing the audio, audio sounds bad. You, the first thing that you're going to do is, ah, I'm out of here. I'm not going to watch this video anymore. Well, I can't think of anything else. Pretty much everything I've told you already is what's going to allow you to differentiate. For you to understand the difference between a fake SM7B and a real SM7B, I've shown you enough photos here. You know exactly what to look for. Don't be fooled. Don't buy a fake F SM7B. Look for the things that I've told you in the video. You won't go wrong. I promise you the next time I have to buy an SM7B microphone, I will not make a mistake. And if you have any questions or any comments about this microphone or a fake SM7B, leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer those questions for you so that way you can feel happy about your purchase. I'm out. All right, you guys, thank you so much for letting me do this video for you. You know, it really is a shame that you don't know what's actually real or fake in this world, right? But this video allows you to figure out exactly what's going on with that microphone, right? I'm going to have a lot more videos coming for you soon. So until then, don't be fooled, stay tuned, and I'll see you on the next one.